Hey guys, this is day 20 from the day I transferred the queen and her first batch of workers into their new home. So ever since then, the colony has grown to about 17 to 18 strong, and it has stayed that way for the last two weeks. These 17 to 18 ants are the first batch of workers, and they will be relatively smaller in size compared to the next batch that will come after them. As you can see here, the queen and the workers are eagerly tending to combination of new eggs, larvae and pupae as well. Uh, you can also see um, some of the worker ants feeding the queen, um, cleaning the queen, and while the rest of the worker ants are actually moving the eggs around and also feeding the larvae. Now, let's talk about the metamorphoses of an ant. So much like butterflies, uh, ants undergo a complex process called metamorphosis before they become adults. First, the queen lays eggs. As you can see over here, these eggs hatch into larvae, right here. And the larvae turns into pupae, right here. And the pupae finally becomes an adult ant. The whole process from egg to adult takes about 30 days. Um, this is actually relatively short compared to other species of ants which may take double the amount of that time. Alright, let's talk about the eggs. Now these eggs are tiny, they are oval shaped and they have a sticky surface. This stickiness acts as a glue that attaches the eggs into clusters that is easily carried around by the workers. This actually serves as an important function when the colony is under attack because the eggs can be moved around quickly to a safe place. One interesting thing about the queen is that she is able to lay unfertilized eggs called trophic eggs. These eggs are laid specifically as food for herself and her larvae when she is founding her colony. Um, so when she's founding her colony, she's unable to go out and forage for food. Uh, that, that is why she lays eggs to feed herself. Now let's move on to the next stage of metamorphosis, the larvae. The eggs will transform into larvae, which looks like a larger and longer version of the eggs themselves. This larvae have small hairs on them, which serves as the same function as the glue of the eggs. The hairs enable them to be able to attach to each other and also on surfaces. The larvae also have heads and mouths that are able to turn towards food. The workers have to feed the larvae a lot of protein for them to be able to grow into full mature adults. Right now, I'm feeding them about 2 mini meal worms once every 2 days. So as the colony grows, I will increase the amount of food accordingly. The third and final stage of a weaver ant's development is the pupae stage. You can see some right here. During the pre pupae stage, the larvae becomes inactive and gets rid of the poisons they've collected during that stage. This forms a black dot on them. You can see one right here. The pupae are positioned in a fetal position with their heads lowered and bodies shaped much like a banana. When the pupae is fully grown, it will darken in colour before it finally wakes up. For the first few days of its life, it will be lightly coloured in comparison to the other members of the colony. They will only darken after a few days into a deep red. These new ants, which are called nanotics, will live their first time in relative safety only tending to the eggs and the queen and doing other indoor duties. Once they are strong enough, they will start to take on more dangerous tasks like foraging and defending the nest. Okay, we have here a worker ant in the midst of disposing a mealworm exoskeleton. So what I notice about weaver ants is that they have a very efficient hygienic way of disposing their trash. Um, as you can see, 
there is a scattering of a mealworm exoskeletons and a dead worker ant here and they are often moved right to the furthest edges of the tank for disposal. This is another corner of the tank where the weaver ants chose to dispose their trash. Alright, as you can see here, the weaver ants have kept the mouth or the entrance of their nest really, really clean. It's, it's almost spotless. Not a single trace of rubbish or waste at all. This dead end right here is the first casualty of my colony. Well, um, weaver ants usually have a lifespan of 2 to 2.5 months. This fella died in less than one month. So I suspect he sustained injuries while trying to take down a mealworm and later succumb to his injuries. Rest in peace, little dude. Alright guys, I'm gonna check back on this colony in about one or two weeks time. Hopefully by then, the pupae would have matured and metamorphosized into the new batch of adult red ants. Um, they will be bigger, stronger, and more aggressive than the previous batch. So stay tuned guys. Alright, I know I said I'll update you guys in one or two weeks time, but I just simply can't wait any longer because two of the pupae have turned dark brown and are actually on the verge of metamorphosizing into an adult red weaver ant. So you can see them over here and over here. They are directly underneath the queen. Um, you can look at their little heads. You can even see their eyes. And their tummy have actually fully developed into a bright red color. So I'm guessing in about two to three days time, they would make the change into an adult ant. Beautiful, aren't they? This is just another angle, another perspective of the beauty. So as you're admiring their beauty, let me just share with you something that I've discovered about the queen ant. Her first batch of workers numbered to be about 17 to 18 workers. However, this second batch, eggs, larvae and pupae all included, numbered to be about 25 to 26 in all. So that is quite a huge increase. Now, I think that the reason of this increase is the first batch of workers are able to forage and look for food uh, to feed the queen. So the queen is much more nourished than she was before when she started off as a single queen. Um, I think there's a correlation between nutrition and the number of brood that she can reproduce. So let's just go along and observe um, whether the third, the fourth, the fifth batch, will there be an increase in the number of brood?